Howdy folks, this is the Volantex Ranger uh, 757-4 and this one came from gearbest.com uh, Purchase links are in the description This one is 1.4 meters wingspan uh, and this is the ready to fly version so it comes with radio, battery, charger, receiver everything you need to do and a really good set of instructions too for So here's a quick look at what's in the box and we have the fuselage, wings, tail surfaces, radio, spar, batteries, charger, all the bits and pieces. And the accessories pack has wheels, prop, all the attachment brackets, everything else you'd need. Get to the build. First thing is to attach the wheels to the landing gear. And you need to loosen off that inner nut first to make sure the wheels look rotating freely. And then tighten up the nylock nut onto the landing gear. And that's spinning nice and freely, so that's all done now. Now to attach the landing gear to the fuselage and make sure you get it the right way around. It needs to angle forward towards the nose, otherwise your plane's going to nose over every time you take off. And you use the provided plastic bracket and a couple of screws. Now I'm attaching the control horn to the elevator. And they actually provide a spare control horn, which is nice. You just insert the four screws and snug them up into the backing plate on the other side of the elevator. Next step is to assemble the tail. First up we're going to work out which way to plug in the elevator and rudder servos because they're not uh, indicated in any way on those servo plugs. So I just decided to plug them in, use a servo tester to work out which is the correct way around. And I found that the lower connection was the correct way around with the white wire facing up but the upper connection needed to be swapped over with the black wire facing up. Here's a closer view of the correct way to connect them for my plane. Uh, your plane may be different. So both servos are working now, so I'm going to mark which connection has the black wire facing up. Now it's time to fit the control horns to the servos for both the rudder and elevator. And with the servo tester still connected, I'll uh, make sure that they're centered up before I connect the push rods. Now fitting the vertical and horizontal stabilizers together and you need to tuck all those little wires into the little space provided. Now fitting the tail wheel assembly which holds uh, the tail onto the fuselage as well. And that's all held together with a couple of little screws. The screwdriver provided with the kit is actually a bit too small so it's better to change for a bigger one for better results. And the steerable tail wheel just clicks into the little plastic bracket on the bottom of the rudder. Time to connect the push rods. First you need to adjust them to the right length just by screwing the clevis connector in a little bit. Slide in the little safety band and connect the push rod up. I started with the connection on the outer hole for the most docile performance and then you just slide that little safety band up over the clevis connector so it doesn't come apart. So that was the elevator so we just do the same procedure for the rudder make sure it's all operating smoothly. And a quick check with the servo tester just to make sure the connections are still good. Now I'm fitting the propeller and you need to choose the correct size uh, adapter ring first for the shaft. Make sure the prop numbers are facing forward. This is the spinner plate which goes on first. Then the prop onto the spinner plate. Then the washer. Then the nylock nut. And you snug that down tight. And then fit the spinner cone. Now for the ailerons, I'm fitting the servo arms onto the servos and using a servo tester we need to make sure they're centred up before we fit the push rod. Fit the control horns, same way as with the elevator. And I'm getting lazy and using a power driver. Attach the push rods and the safety band and give it a wiggle with the servo tester. 
Now it's time to make all the connections to the receiver. Now the receiver was originally up in that space under the wing, but I just passed it through into the cockpit to make it a bit more easily accessible. This is the wire lead for the ailerons. And it's marked on the receiver which wire plugs into where. The yaw is the rudder, pitch is elevator, and roll is the aileron. Now I'm connecting up the aileron servo leads and once that's done you can tuck the wires in and we can mount the wing. Here's the cockpit area and I love this amount of space, that's fantastic. You'd be able to fit heaps of batteries and extra gear in there easily. So there's a bit of velcro there to hold the battery in position. Now for the radio, this is a really nice little simple radio actually. Four AA batteries. And you push and hold the button to turn it on. I'm just checking the battery to see how much charge, and it's only got about 40% charge to start off with, but that's enough to test the electronics. So the beeps are good. And whoops, watch out for the throttle lever. And I'm checking the direction of travel of the rudder here, which is reversed, so I have to hit the reverse switch. Now that's the correct direction. And the elevator is the correct way around, and the ailerons go the correct way. So that is now ready to fly. And the last thing I like to do before the maiden is do a current or a power test of the, of the motor. And at full throttle it's drawing about 20 amps, so that should give plenty of power. So that was a pretty easy build with no glue, uh, and I like the quality of the components. So stay tuned for the maiden video.